In preparation for the OMRAT meeting in 2020, we began looking at how our updated instrument selection process fit with instruments that are types of imaging instruments, like x-rays, ultrasounds, or CT scans. From this process, undertaken by the imaging working group, we learned three lessons that really could help OMRATers in general for any outcome instrument, not just for imaging outcome instruments. In this whiteboard, we will talk about the second lesson, the importance of thinking through all the things that might be influencing the number you get on an x-ray score or on a pain measure for that matter. We call these things sources of variability. Meet Indira. She's part of a clinical trial in, for a new osteoporosis medication. Osteoporosis is a bone disease that Indira has just learned that she has. It means her bones have lower mineral density, which makes her bones less dense with more air space and less bone. This makes the bone structure weaker and could lead to fractures from simple things like a slip or a fall. Bone mineral density is an important outcome in osteoporosis medication trials, and Indira is being asked to go for a bone mineral density test as part of her participation in the trial. When Indira went to have the bone mineral, mineral density test done for the trial, she was surprised at all the rules around the testing. Why does she have to go to a specific location to have the test done instead of just going to the bone mineral density test in her neighborhood? Why were they so very specific about her positioning on the day of the test? The technician kept on moving her from one position to another during test preparation. Was all that really necessary? Now, John has osteoarthritis of the knee. Osteoarthritis is a disorder that can affect any movable joint. The breakdown of tissues and abnormal changes to cell structures of joints can result in pain, stiffness, and loss of movement to the joint. Now, John went for a doctor's appointment and he was asked to fill in a questionnaire about his mobility, meaning his ability to move around, on a tablet like an iPad while sitting in the waiting room at the hospital. He was rushing to get it done and it was noisy and hard to concentrate and he thought it would be much better if I could just do this at home. He also wasn't sure how to answer certain questions about his mobility. He recently started using a cane and he really thinks it's the cane, not that medication, that seems to be making the big difference. So Indira and John are showing us about things in an outcome testing situation that can make real differences in the score that we get from a questionnaire or from a machine. Over the past two years, when we were looking carefully at imaging outcomes and how we gather evidence about their measurement performance, we found that these important differences in the way tests are set up and done are talked a lot, a lot more in the imaging field, like the x-rays and bone mineral density tests, than they are in other types of patient outcomes, like John's questionnaire. When situations cause the scores, score here is shorthand for a score result from imaging tests that should have had the same score to be different. This is called variability in scores. The imaging group said that all these factors that can cause a difference in a score should be labeled sources of variability in a scoring instrument. They will be specific to the instrument being used. However, we did feel that they fell into four broad categories. The differences that may be caused by working from different definitions and how you operationalize things like bone mineral density, for example. For example, there could be more than one way to decide whether there was osteoarthritis in John's knee. Some doctors may feel the diagnosis should be based on x-ray, while others feel more that a patient's report of symptoms, pain, stiffness, and swelling are enough to make that diagnosis. Clearly, we need to agree. The difference could be more technical in nature. For example, for Indira's bone mineral density test, was the value used that from her hip, her spine, or her wrist? Often this is standardized so that it's always done the same way at a certain region of the body. Or variability in score could come from different ways in which the healthcare workers read and interpret an image. And it could come from a patient factor. For example, Indira had to be repositioned several times, and perhaps she had a mild curvature in her spine. That meant that they really had to reposition her in order to get the imaging device exactly lined up to get the right angle. 
adjustments were needed to get an accurate measure. So this is another way to organize the same factors and some of the things which we should consider for each of them. With this organizing framework, we can start to look at the factors that might be at play in any outcome measurement instrument. If we think about each one of these sources and the specifics, we'll be able to have a systematic way to think about outcome instruments for any imaging test that we are using in a research project. For example, always using the same joint, in other words, standardizing the joint that is used for bone mineral density testing. Differences or variability in scores can happen in two ways. Sometimes it's very unpredictable or random, and that just adds to the term noise to our outcome measurement instrument. Other times it's very predictable or systematic in how it impacts the outcome score. And that is more problematic because it will cause a bias or an inaccuracy in our results and lead to either an overestimation or an underestimation of the true result. That really needs to be avoided as it will mislead the reader, the healthcare provider interpreting the report, and potentially the care of the patient. But for each type of error, there are ways that we can improve the situation. For example, let's say that there are issues with how the image machine is set up to measure what it's supposed to be measuring. This is called calibration. Essentially, it is a process of setting the device to a standard value. For example, the speed gauge in all cars should be set in the same way so that 60 kilometers per hour is the same no matter which car you're driving. The example in blue in this table shows there are some calibrational issues with the machine that are causing a systematic error. Say it causes the image to consistently miss important information in capturing the image. Once that is identified, researchers will know it is important to have a good quality equipment and to ensure proper calibration before the testing. And sometimes that mean, might mean, like in Indira's case, you need to travel to the same machine for a clinical trial so that intermachine differences are avoided. And this is the table in your handout, thinking through sources of variability for an imaging outcome instrument, some examples, and some solutions for managing the variability. So in Dara's situation, some of these might make sense to her about the BMD machine, particularly about calibrating machines and making sure that only one machine is used in a study. For John, we could create the same type of table, but now for a patient reported outcome instrument, the questionnaire that John had to fill out asking him about his mobility. Here we see the same table outlining the sources of variability that can impact scores obtained on the mobility questionnaire. Similarly, when the problem is identified, it leads to suggestions for a solution. So in this whiteboard, we have talked about the importance of specifying the sources of variability that can influence the scores that we obtain on our outcome measurement instruments. We learn lessons by looking at imaging outcomes, but these actually apply equally well to patient reported outcome instruments as well. So what does this mean for instrument selection at OMRACT? We will be encouraging groups at OMRAC to look at these differences, different sources of variability for each of their instruments and to try to assess their impact. For clinical trials, we can sometimes standardize readers or machines to ensure comparability across the results of subjects in a trial. Or we could use multiple readers and use the mean of their scores. For PROs, we might standardize the way the data is collected. In future, these recommendations could go along with the final recommendation for the instrument made by the working group. We want to thank the imaging working group for working on this over the past two years and also recognize the patient research partners task force on imaging that helped us develop this whiteboard.